And now it's time for more of Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hookup. This portion of the show is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup. Rancho Leonero, where your wildest Baja dreams come true. Maui Gym Sunglasses, the choice of the best captains. Shimano Rods and Reels, fish with the best. Shimano. And by Yamaha Outboards, official motor sponsor of Let's Talk Hookup. Here we go. Another great hour of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hookup. Here's Pete Gray and rock god Rick Maxa. Welcome back. Hour number two. Let's talk hookup on the Mighty 1090. Pete Gray here. Rock god Rick, as you heard earlier in the show, is getting him on Hurricane Bank on the Royal Star on our Let's Talk Hookup 12-day trip there. We'll hear more from him next weekend. But we're having a great time here talking to Al Q. I'll say the last name. Quattrochi. Quattrochi. It's easier the way you say it, yeah. And uh, Al Q is what we call him, or Al Quattrochi is an expert fly fisherman, saltwater guy, ties flies. And it's amazing the conversations we're having off air with Al. I, I am learning so much, and I hope you are too, because it's uh, a lot of fun. And it, it, it just jacks me up to go fly fishing and go catch a big calico or a, or a big corbina in the surf or a, or a perch or whatever Absolutely. anything yeah I, I mean i wish i could take everybody to a place and have them catch a bonefish on a fly rod for the fir- for their first fish and they would be hooked for life it's just a, it's a life-changing experience seeing something like that just rip across the flat at 90 miles an hour yeah and, and just having them on a fly rod it's like, just a lot of fun like going to christmas island christmas island is definitely a bucket list trip for any any, anybody. Anybody. And you can be a total novice. I've taken total novice. People that never touched a fly rod in their life. And Absolutely. they caught so many bonefish and other species on the fly it, rod. It, it would be like saltwater fly fishing 101. Yeah. You know, you re- it's a great place to take people that are, that are new to fly fishing. There's so many opportunities there. And we're taking people there in June with the cast man. So there, I think there's even spots available. That's a great spot. It, it's an amazing it's an unbelievable place. Unbelievable bucket list trip that's not that expensive for a remote destination. Uh, I agree. I think for the value and for where you're going and for the opportunities you get, it's it's probably one of the best. Uh, An amazing trips. experience. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, you want to join us, a couple lines open, 877-792-1090 or 858-457-1090. A line open, each one of those lines there. And we're giving away a handmade Anza fillet knife today. This is the ultimate fillet knife courtesy of Anza Knives. It's an amazing knife. I've been using it, and I am just nothing but totally impressed. I'll never use another knife once I try this knife. It's, it's, it's a good one. And we're also going to give you a Come Fly With Me t-shirt that Al Q designed. It's a very, very cool design t-shirt, uh, limited edition that Al Q uh, g- gave one of uh, our lucky callers today. So you can win that package today just by joining us here this morning. I want to talk about carp. The number one sport fish in Europe, uh, as a guy named Martin James used to talk about on the show 20-plus years ago, many, many years ago, we had this uh, Englishman named Martin James. I don't know if you ever heard of him, but uh, uh, I'm not sure if he's with us anymore, but he was pretty old back then, but that was 20 years ago. So um, he, he used to talk about that's the number one sport fish in Europe. On the guys with the fly rods. Abs- yeah, carp are huge in, Euro- in Europe. And, yeah. and, you know, we have them here. We have them all over the place here. We, they're, like, they're like the cockroaches of the L.A. River systems. Um, we have them in all our urban rivers, you know, the L.A. River, Santa Ana River. A lot of lakes down here in San Diego have them. And, you know, my buddy Conway Bowman, who everybody knows, um, we, we've, me and Conway do this little thing every year at Lake Henshaw. And we just picked the date for this coming uh, uh, summer. It's going to be June 2nd at Lake Henshaw. We do a carp uh, throwdown, and it's basically a, a really fun tournament. There's two divisions. There's a wading division and a boat division, and uh, it, it's a great opportunity to catch carp on the surface with, with, on dry flies. Dry flies. Yeah, because what happens is we try to time it when we get this hopper hatch, and all these hoppers, you know, when it gets really hot and dry, they start, they're all, all out in the fields, and the cows kick them up, and they kind of get thrown into the lake, and those carp just line up and sip them off the surface. So wow. you see a ring, you throw it, you hit the ring, you get a carp. It's, 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 fun, it's no fantastic. No kidding. Yeah, really fantastic. It's a really a special place. Yeah. How many carp in a day can you get when that hopper hatch is going off? When the hopper hatch is going off, and if you're, you're, you're in the zone, you, you, can, you can probably get a dozen carp without any problem. And these are big fish, and they pull hard. 
They do. They're, they're great fish. They're, I mean, I would never underestimate a carp. It's not a trash fish by any means. Not at they're, all. They're very, very smart. They're, they're very sensitive. Um, they're, they, they're very selective. Uh, they, they're, they're a great game fish. And what I love about carp and even corbina is in California we have opportunities to sight fish for these fish, which to me is the ultimate way to fly fish. Oh, no doubt. And when, if you hone your sight fishing abilities, then when you do take a trip, of a lifetime. If you go to Florida, if you go to Christmas Island or wherever, you take that fly rod with you, you can use that in the same way you would use it in your home waters. You can yeah. you can sight cast to really beautiful exotic fish and have a ball. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Yeah, and that yeah, and there's nothing like sight fishing. Absolutely. And putting and being able to to, to have a, a fly land right in front of the thing and then watch him eat it. That's right. There's, there's nothing like it. There's no, I'll tell you a funny story. I was in the Keys years and years ago in the 90s, and I was kind of new to the whole tarpon thing, and I was fishing on the ocean side over white sand, and this gigantic school of tarpon came down the line. It looked like just these gigantic, it looked like submarines coming at us. You know, they were like 100-pound-plus fish. And the guy's like, okay, throw, throw, throw the fly. And I threw a nice cast in front, and I, I just let it, he goes, I let it sit there. He goes, strip it. And the first one turned and gr- opened its mouth, and ate the fly, and the guy goes, hit him. And I, I, was, I was frozen because I couldn't believe this 150-pound fish just ate a fly that was about an inch long, and he just opened his mouth and spit it out. And he goes, what did you do? I said, I was just amazed watching just that. Just awesome sight. I, that was awesome, you know? Yeah, yeah. But that's, it's really exciting. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of sight fishing to giant fish, uh, I talked earlier about Katmai Lodge. And we're doing two different trips to Katmai Lodge next summer. This place... This is a bucket list trip. This is an amazing spot in uh, remote Alaska. And um, if you're into sight fishing for giant trout, and I'm talking trout 20 to 30 inches, we're, we're going to be flying out to remote lakes, and literally you watch these giant trout feeding on egg, eggs behind sockeye salmon. And you're waiting in this super remote thing. There's there's brown bears in the rivers with you that don't care a darn that you're there. They're eating the salmon, and uh, you know they're not going to bother you. Just kind of respect them and know that they're there and such like that. But this is the trip that you will go on, and it'll be absolutely amazing. Now the trip that I'm going on uh, is the Custler Yachts is co-sponsoring it. It's August 25th to the 29th. It's 39.95 plus. Air and you get a free flyout, which is another $450 value. They've discounted that package of about $450 to us. So overall, you're going to save about $900. They're never going to do this again. And if you want to have one of these bucket list trips on knocked off your list, you should go on this trip because the, the trip is almost full. I think there's like less than a handful of spots left on it. We're also doing another trip, which is a great trip if you uh, want to catch a lot of salmon. King salmon, uh, the uh, sockeye salmon, uh, and giant trout. That's July 14th through 18th with Harold Davis and Rock Cod Rick will be on that trip. Um, that's July 14th through 18th. That one's 39.95 plus air. That's prime time, and you'll bring home a lot of salmon. And also silver salmon during the uh, August 25th trip. We, you're going to bring home a lot of silver salmon and catch those. Those are really fun. You ever caught a... A, a coho or silver salmon on the fly? I've actually, I've, I've caught a, um, a king salmon. They, they, that pulls hard. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to go, catmy.com, catmy.com, or give a call to Catmy Lodge and tell them you want to go on the Let's Talk Hookup trip with us. All of our trips are listed on our website, letstalkhookup.com. Go to the trips page and get more information on that. Now, what if somebody wants to come to the carp throwdown June 2nd? Yeah, we have a website. It's the carpthrowdown.com. Uh, you go up there. We haven't posted the new date yet. It'll be June 2nd. We just got that date. So I would just say just get up there like in the beginning of the year, and we'll have the information that you'll need to figure it all out and how to sign up and all that stuff. Very good. Randy in Costa Mesa, you're next up. Good morning, Randy. Good morning, guys. Great show today. Thank you. Um, I was wondering about the different line classes and in, in, uh, how many outfits – you would really need to cover a day's fishing like at Catalina. And I'd love to take the answer off the air. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. Uh, what I would say is um, if I was going to Catalina, I would throw an 8-weight with me, and I'd probably go with maybe a 10-weight. And that should cover most situations. You hook a big yellowtail, you want to have something, you know, like a 10 or an 11 or even a 12 or a 14. But I think a 10 
you could probably get the get the job done if you point the rod at them and, and bite the fish off the reel. But the majority of stuff you're going to get are you know the bonita, the barracuda, the calicos. A, a, an eight weight rod should probably handle that just just fine. What if you hook a big white sea bass? You hook a white sea bass, the ten, the ten will take care yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah I mean okay. that thirty six pound white sea bass I had, I had it on a ten. On a ten. Yeah. Yeah. Is that kind of that's a kind of an a, a, an eight and a ten or kind of a good call for most anything that for we most have in, inshore here, unless you're going after the big tunas, you know, we get the tunas come up the line and you, you're trying to throw flies at them, uh, then I would I would move up to it like a 12 or, or or 14. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very good. All right. I hope that answers the questions. Thanks a lot for the call. It, it, you don't need that much equipment when you're saltwater fly fishing, right? You just need the, no. The you just right need the equipment. basics. You need, a, you need a fishing license. You need some flies. You need your your your, your, your setup and a stripping basket. And when you're on a boat, we use a bucket. A bucket. Yeah, yeah. You, just you, a five gallon bucket. No, no. They, they actually sell. You can get almost like a trash bucket. Okay. You know, and you just put some again some of those fingers at the bottom, a little bit of water, but it'll, it'll contain your line in a boat. You know. Oh. And I always bring idea. I always bring duct tape with me whenever I fish on other people's boats because I'll duct tape things that the fly line fly line will catch anywhere it can. So if I see stuff that's a little bit crazy, I just duct tape it for the day. Okay. So that you know my fly line is going to fly out of the boat. Easily. Oh, okay. So you're not going to hang up. I'm on not going to hang up. Yeah. Yeah. So explain that because I've never heard that before on a boat because I like to fly fish for my boat. You you actually it's like a trash can. Yeah, well, yeah. You can you can get sort of like a it's sort of. Um, we, I'll tell you the easiest way to do it. You know, when the kid, you go to Target and the kids go back to school, they get those those um, those collapsible, uh, what do they call them? Where they put clothes in those little clothes. Oh things. yeah, uh huh. Yeah, yeah. So you you can get one of those, cut all the little straps off, and then put some weight at the bottom. You you can get a uh, like a tube, a, a plastic tube, and put some weights in it. Put a ring around the bottom so it it anchors it down. Okay. Put a wet T- uh, rag inside there, so it, c- it keeps your your line wet, and you just throw your line in there, and it comes out every time clean. Wow, that's the easiest way to do it. That's an easy. When way. I travel to places that are remote, I'll take one of those collapsible deals with me, fill up pl- a plastic bags with sand, okay, to weigh it down on the boat, and then I just leave it there. Uh-huh. I don't even bring it home. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, good call. Hey, speaking of a good call, here it comes: the FishDope.com report by Captain Dave Hansen, your saltwater guide. And this fishdope.com report is sponsored in part by Fisherman's Processing in San Diego. Fisherman's Processing, San Diego's finest. That's why they're known as the fish pros. And once you try Fisherman's Processing, you're hooked because they'll fillet and vacuum pack your fish to your specs, as well as the best smoked fish, jerky, and, of course, that world-famous tuna burger that Fisherman's Processing does. Check fishermansprocessing.com for details or see them. When your trip returns to the San Diego landings, let's talk to your saltwater guide, Captain Dave Hanson. What's up, Dave? Well, good morning, Pete. Good morning, Joe. Gosh, I just, <laughs> my passion is fly fishing. So that is incredible listening to the show today. Get me all revved up. On my vacations, I always go fly fishing. That's my deal. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Awesome. That's my zen. There's nothing better than tying a fly walking out to the river and then catching a fish on the top fly that you just Amen, caught. brother. Amen. <laughs> that is it. But, hey, sorry about last week. My boss wanted to catch a million lobsters, so we lobster fish Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. I was dead tired Sunday. I slept right through it. I'm sorry, Pete. That's okay. Sorry about that. But here we go. Unbelievable week again, guys. I, I can't even tell you how insane this is. This is just mind-boggling. The amount of fish that are still biting in U.S. waters is just absolutely amazing. The weather has been absolutely spectacular, flat, glassy, calm conditions, and that bluefin just keeps on keeping on. You just keep watching what's going on out there, and it's insane. And then Greg on the Aztec was able to find that bigger fish yesterday. They relocated that bigger fish. Somebody's going to put some fish on the boat today or tomorrow because the weather's insane. They relocated the big fish. But that small, and we say smaller fish, the 15 to 40, 70, 60 pound fish has been biting for the last forever. And we, it was, that was not small fish until the last couple of years. That was quality fish, 60 pound blue, and we say it's small fish. Come on, guys. You know, kid. That's insane. That yeah. is insane. And it's December. It is December, and we're still talking about it. Now, Jimmy Deck, we haven't got this stuff on fish dope yet because this just happened yesterday late in the afternoon. <laughs> And Danny will have it up today, I'm sure. But Jimmy Decker was over at San Clemente Island yesterday, him and Eric, and they were coming home 
from bass fishing over at the island, and they stumbled across giant spots of bluefin between the 277 and the 14 yesterday. All they had on the boat was their bass rod, so oh. they oh. looked at it. They looked at it, but Jimmy was like, I don't have anything on the boat to catch them on. <laughs> wow. He called, yeah, he called me last night. The water's 63 to 65 degrees in the channel, greasy flat, spots of bluefin jumping up all over the place. Unbelievable. It, and then here's we're going to have squid all – it looks like we're going to have squid all winter finally. You know, we've been coming out of this warm water for the last five, four years, but everybody's got squid up and down the coast. There's squid all over the place. One of my good friends, Stephen, took some of that squid over to Catalina yesterday, fished that west end, west coast, had a nice little go-around on that nicer grade yellow, that 15 to 20-pound yellow up on the – he said there's no boats over at Catalina. Really? I can't even comprehend. It's flat, classy, calm. Then down on the east end, the Bonita are biting, really good Bonita fishing over at Catalina, and nobody's fishing San Clemente Island. Who knows what's even going on over there because nobody's going there except for a few of the bass guys are going over there and fishing Calico. So all I can say, like I say, every week, you've got to go fishing. There's, yeah. not, there's no reason not to go fishing. Yeah. There's a lot of reasons not to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. And, of course, fishtope.com. <laughs> All the boys over there have been doing a great job keeping everybody in tune with what's going on. And this is the time of the year you really want to be in touch with Fish Dope because things change. And Right, and there's very, very little coverage. Danny's got the coverage for you. So it's hard to get your buddy to tell you what's going on when they're not going out. Yeah, no doubt about it. And uh, 20 bucks off, a new membership. What a great Christmas gift for somebody. Fishdope.com, great Christmas gift, 20 bucks off. Use the code HOOKUPNOW, lowercase, no space, Hook up now is the code at fishdope.com. And how do we find Captain Dave Hansen? Well, you can look me up on the web at yoursaltwaterguide.com, or you can look, or you can give me a call at 949-374-0786, and I'd be more than happy to help you out on your boat, or you can come out on my boat. Either way. Very good. All right, Captain Dave, appreciate that, and we'll talk to you next Sunday. All right, Pete, Kelly, and I are on our way to the beach, so we'll see you later. Have a good time. Take a fly ride with you. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. See, see you later. All right. Bart Hall, good morning, Bart. Well, good morning. How are you, Pete? Doing great. And uh, I'm really enjoying the show this morning. Um, you know, as a, Thank you. a very occasional fly fisherman, it's been really entertaining. But, yeah. But I have a question. Um, you know, as you know, Pete, for many years I've been trying to get the fly industry involved in the in the Fred Hall shows it was very, very little success. You know, with the exception of guys they you know, like um, his and hers, you know, Frank Selby who who really wants to help the average fisherman learn how to how to fish and uh, fly fish and um and, and I met a guy uh, last year called Charles Jardine who came over from England and and uh he um he we got to talking about it and he was very excited about, you know, the Fred Hall shows and stuff and we, we tried to put together a group of industry people, and, and it just failed miserably. And I'm curious what you guys think. Why Why does the fly fishing industry not want to expand the sport and make it bigger? Because there's more people at the Fred Hall shows who want to learn, who already fish, who want to learn to fly fish than probably fish in a year in Southern California. And that's my question. That, that's a great question, and I, I wish I had a good answer for you. I, I I agree with you. I you know I've always embraced the spinning and conventional guys because I used to be one, and and I feel like we're all part of this together. It's like f- having a fly rod is just another tool, and it shouldn't be the high and holy thing that people like have this mystique about. It really shouldn't be. Uh, and I, I know in the past, I think the fly guys were always kind of put in the back of the fly uh, Fred Hall show. Uh, I don't know if that had anything to do with 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 anything really, but uh, I, I I feel bad that we don't have a presence there anymore like we used to. Um, I don't know what the answer is. I even even the fly shows that used to come around California, we don't even have them yeah. anymore. You yeah. know, it's kind I mean, of sad to see. It's sad, and some of the fly shops are starting to step it up a little bit and try to do their own shows, which is which is which is great. But the closest one to us, I think, is up in Pleasanton. So. Um, I, I don't. I really don't have an answer for you, but I agree 100 percent with you. I think I think we should embrace all sorts of fishing, and we should all learn from each other. Well, I do too, and I think it should just be another tool at our arsenal. You know, that's the way we've always looked at it. But anyway, I've enjoyed the show today. All right, so thanks. Well, thanks that's what we're trying to do here, and and I want to thank Al because Al's 
Al, you know, he makes his living doing other things, but he took his time. He came all the way down from the South Bay this morning and is doing work on his own to try and promote fly fishing to our listeners. And uh, thank you, Al, for that. Well, maybe we can get together, Al and I, and talk sometime. Yeah, I would would love to. I'm a big Frank Sinatra fan, too, so there you go. (laughs) There you go. Yeah, all right. Very good, Bart. Nice to hear from you. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. I just posted two great photos on our Instagram as well as our Facebook page. Let's Talk Hookup Radio Show is our Facebook, and Hookup 1090 is our Instagram. First photo is a studio shot here of Al Q and myself in the Mighty 1090 Studios, and I'm holding up that Come Fly With Me t-shirt in that shot. The second shot is a shot of these incredible flies that Al tied and gave me this morning uh, that are all saltwater flies. So well, you could use them in freshwater as well. Freshwater as well, yeah. But amazing, amazing, and 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 like you said, simple to tie, really. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's just it's a pleasure to just sit down at a device and just tie a few flies and yeah. just forget about everything. You know, yeah. it's great. So check that out, Facebook, Instagram. You can link all that on our f- front page of our Let's Talk Hookup website, Let's Talk Hookup dot com. On the top right, all of our social media is is an easy click away right there. Let's go ahead and jump back into those phones and talk to. John in Mira Mesa. Hi, John. Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, I have two questions, if if you'll allow. Uh, the first one is, uh, you know, I'm a native of San Diego, and uh, I'm only aware of uh, Strouds and um, San Diego Blue Water, uh, Blue Water San Diego Fly Shop. Are there any other local fly shops in San Diego uh, that you know of? The one that I would I, suggest is the Fly Stop. It's a, it's a fairly new shop. It's been around only a few years, two or three years. Mm-hmm. They just opened up an, uh, a new. I don't have the address on me, unfortunately, but if you just uh, Google it, you could find it. It's 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 right here it's in San in Diego. San Diego somewhere. Yes. And then of course Blue Water Tackle up in Solana Beach and 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 San Diego Fly Shop up there. And then uh, Strouds, which Strouds. is still, still uh, the kicking. original and still kicking, still yeah. kicking. Yeah. So there yeah. are some small <laughs> shops around. Yeah, yeah. So those were the those last two were the ones I was familiar with. And then my other question is, I've I've had times where I've launched my kayak down in uh, J Street and. I've come across huge schools of a uh, of mullet, and I know they're vegetarians. I was just wondering if you've ever uh, tried to target mullet on a fly. Uh, I personally haven't, but I have friends that have and have actually caught them. So if they're similar to like milkfish. You know, they, they they are plankton eaters, and they eat lots of you know um, small green algae and plankton. So so what I would suggest is you know flies that are I would use a floating line because a lot of times they're in the surface. They're in the surface, so I would use a floating line, maybe a longer leader because they're a little bit leader shy, and uh, a small hook. And I would just tie maybe some green wool or make it look a little bit, you know, like like a piece like a plant, you know, and and just don't really weight them too much, uh, and just drift them, drift them into the the school. And because what they'll do is they'll open their mouths and they're constantly eating. Just drift them in, and, and if they see it and they like it, they'll eat it. And, and it's like a poor man's tarpon. Those things are crazy when you hook them. Yeah, they are nuts. they? Yeah, they're absolutely really strong, strong little fish. But I have buddies of mine that have actually caught them on freshwater little nymphs and little, uh, you know, tiny little green little flies. You just got to be – it's a lot of casting. It's not easy because they don't, they don't eat the fly as readily as other fish. But they, you can catch them if you want to target them. Indeed. Hey, good suggestion. Thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. That does free up. 858-457-1090. Open right now. Kenny in Hawaiian Gardens, you're next up, Kenny. Hey, morning, guys. Good morning. Hey, uh, Pete, I just wanted to compliment you on your uh, uh, picture on the calendar this month. Uh, oh. Kind of coincidence, you guys are talking flies, and you got that big GT there. The cool C- picture. The CCA uh, calendar, yeah, I guess I, I'm, I'm the December guy on that. That was at Christmas Island, and uh, I, I was using an eight-weight fly rod, a G. Loomis fly rod, and uh, and we were fishing bonefish, uh, just kind of walking the flats with the guide. And this, I don't know, he was like a 15, 18-pound uh, giant trolley, which is small by giant trolley standards. still a standard. great fish, still a great fish. But that fish ate my fly. He came right at me. And the, and the guide kept on saying, strip, 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 strip. 
That fish ate it from a foot at the end of my rod. I had about a foot left, wow. and he ate it right there. And it was a bonefish fly. It was a bonefish fly. Nice. Yeah, just a small fly, and he wanted to eat it. He, he, literally, like you talked about the tarpon, Yeah. he had his mouth open, and I was just like, <laughs> but just because I had no line left is the only reason I probably hooked him, just because I had nothing left to pull. But uh, that was quite a fight. It, it took quite a while, and, and, and that was probably one of the one of the great fish of my life is – Catching that thing on a light, basically a light rod for a yeah. for a, a, a fifteen to twenty pound giant trevally. Did he go off the flat, Pete, or stayed on the flat? He stayed on the flat, okay. fortunately. Good. Yeah, and it was a nice flat. So yeah, but it was. Uh, so that's the story behind that picture. And Christmas Island is such an amazing place because you'll see birds in the background, uh, turns and stuff. They were literally dive bombing <clears throat> us while we were walking this. This beach, because that was their nesting area. You were probably fishing the back country. The back country. Yeah, yes. that's yeah. where all they, the nesting birds, they, they got the blue-footed boobies and yeah. all that crazy stuff back yeah. there. Yeah. And that's another reason why Christmas Island is such an amazing experience. It, Christmas Island is like, it's like going to the Discovery Channel. Yeah, it totally I mean, is. Every way you look around you is something amazing. Yeah, for sure. But thanks for asking about that, Kenny, because I, I love telling that story because it's a, it was an, a, one of my memorable experiences of my my fishing life and to catch a fish like that on a fly is truly amazing for sure <laughs> al's caught I'll, I'll say this kenny al's caught fish five times that size on a fly rod right you've caught giant we've gotten there. big one i've got them up to 80 pounds 80 pounds on a fly rod can you imagine that yeah it's 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 it's, it's like controlled chaos yeah, yeah i believe it yeah for sure because i can't i barely landed the 20 pounder or 15 pounder on that. but I, I was rigged to catch a volkswagen though i told you pete yeah. i had i had like you know <clears throat> 200 pound braid and you yeah. know you 200 to, to 130 right? to, to to 80 yeah I, I was ready for for battle i wasn't playing around yeah, yeah there you go hey thanks a lot for the call this morning appreciate that very much and when we come back we're going to take more of your phone calls you stay tuned this is southern california sport fishing voice it's let's talk hook up on the mighty 1090 This is Brandon Hayward with Bite Sport Fishing here to talk about Parker Boats and the crew at West Coast Marine. In the spring of 2013, I bought my first Parker. When it came time to rebrand from one-man charters to Bite Sport Fishing and add to my fleet and start running out of Davies Locker in Newport Beach and Fisherman's Landing this summer season, I chose a Parker. When clients ask why I chose Parker, I always say, I could have had any boat, but my 2320 is perfect for my white sea bass offshore and lobster program. Almost 6,000 hours on my 2320 pilot house over the past six seasons has shown me that Parker is the ultimate West Coast charter boat. It's what customers expect. These stout workhorses are for everything anglers need, as in a stable platform with huge deck space for our West Coast style of live bait fishing. Parker's a big reason why I run more charters than any other small boat operation in Southern California. I like my 2320 so much that I bought another one. And while you never know what's going to happen with fishing, I know it won't be my last Parker I buy from West Coast Marine. If fishing isn't something you do but who you are, then Parker's for you, be it a one-day charter or a lifetime of ownership. If you're ready for a new Parker at a fair, upfront, and honest deal, you need to go see Kevin Kelly at West Coast Marine. Check out their inventory and information at westcoastmarine.com. Hey, this is Rosie with Cedro Sport Fishing. Cedros Island is considered the yellowtail and calico bass fishing capital in the world, and nobody does it better than Cedros Sport Fishing. We are committed to providing first-class service to our guests, as well as an unforgettable fishing experience. We have made a good thing even better. We now have a direct flight departing to the CBX in San Diego. Leave home in the morning and fish in the afternoon. We have a beautiful waterfront lodge with first-class accommodations and meals. What are you waiting for? Call me at 619-772-7570. Or check out sadosportfishing.com. Book soon. Trips are going fast. This is Greg Stotesbury from AFCO. For more than 58 years, the American Fishing Tackle Company has been recognized as the premier manufacturer of precision built offshore fishing tackle. AFCO continues this tradition today with an innovative technical fishing clothing line designed and built by fishermen for fishermen. From our next generation waterproof shorts like Tactical or Stealth to our new anhydrous waterproof jacket and bibs, the entire AFCO clothing line is purpose built with the latest AFTEC fabrics and features designed to deliver for the demanding angler. To find AFCO products, go to AFCO.com and find a dealer near you. What a tuna and yellowtail season last year. Many say the best in 30 years. Could this season be even better? Don't be caught without the right gear. Now is the time to stock up on the trolling lure that proved to be the best. x wrap Magnum by Rapala. Every x wrap Magnum runs perfect right out of the box. They all have extreme action and a controlled deep diving aggressive swimming motion. The large diving lip partners with premium BM hooks and an irresistible
irresistible rattle. The x rap Magnum by Rapala can be trolled at high speeds without rolling or kicking out at depths to 15 feet. Bottom line, the x rap Magnum is the ultimate trolling lure for Southern California and Baja saltwater fishing. With a textured translucent body, internal holographic foil, and 3D holographic eye, x rap Magnums are irresistible to saltwater game fish. Available in a variety of colors and sizes. No matter what you choose, the fish can't resist x rap Magnum by Rapala. Ask your local tackle dealer which is the hottest color and size and start catching more fish. See the entire line at Rapala.com. Cast Tours is a family-owned and operated travel company that specializes in taking you to great fishing destinations. They take pride in providing the best and most affordable vacation packages available. For over 20 years, Cast Tours has been creating unique sport fishing and vacation trips. Whether it's a fishing trip, a family vacation, or an adventure, they will provide you the service and value you deserve. Call Cast Tours at 800-593-6510 or check casttours.com. XEPRS 1090 AM Rosarito, Baja California. San Diego Sports Leader, the home of ESPN Radio, the mighty 1090. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. Hey, join us just a couple weeks away, December 16th, Saturday, December 16th. We'll be doing a live broadcast, a big celebration, holiday celebration at Ron Lane's Fast Lane Kayaks in Mission Bay. Ron Lane's birthday that day. So we're celebrating the holidays, and we're celebrating Ron Lane's birthday. They're going to celebrate with a huge sale at Fast Lane and a lot of other fun stuff. Uh, you just wait. A lot of demos will be available for you to go try all those great kayaks and stand-up paddle boards and such. So mark your calendar Saturday, December 16th from 7 to 9 a.m. and then going on right after that, right there at Fast Lane Kayaks in Mission Bay. Don't want to miss that. Phones are packed up. They want to talk to Al Q. Norman in San Diego, you're next up. Good morning, Norman. Good morning. I took your uh, advice uh, last week and called in this week to talk to Al. Perfect. Yeah. Hey, Al, I got a question for you. There seems to be a real uh, preponderance of red flies for the surf. And I just want to know what your theory is on that why red is such an effective color in the surf and also the bay. Yeah, you know, that, that's a great question, Norman, and, and it's true. Red is a great, red and orange are great colors for the surf. Um, I just think it's just, it lands in the, in the sort of the, the color spectrum that, that fish respond to. Um, they, I, I don't know why, what the rhyme and reason is, but for some reason, they, everything with a little bit of orange in it or even just a red worm type of fly has been very, very productive for all sorts of species in the surf, and that's been for the, over the last 30 years. Fish like red. They love red. Yeah. Is that like any kind of fish? Does it happen in Florida? And you showed me pictures of stripers. Well, back they have a them? worm hatch in Florida, and they use red. They, they'll red use there. a red worm there. But uh, I think anywhere in the yeah anywhere in the country, we have red worms, sandworms, blood worms, and you know that represents those types of baits. All right. Yeah, those red uh, surf flies I, I I used in Christmas Island are very effective there too for just the, yeah <laughs> the absolutely. way it is. It, it's just the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Hey, Norman, okay. thanks a lot for the Thank call you. this morning. Kevin in San Diego, you're next up. Good morning, Kevin. Hey, good morning. Hey, I had a question for Al. Um, what's the best rig for fly fishing halibut from the surf, and what's the biggest halibut you've caught from the surf? Ooh, that's a good one. You know, I haven't caught any jumbos, but um, I'd say the big – I've caught legals. I've caught many, many legals, but I've never caught a real monster. Um, I was. I did a presentation this week in, at the Long Beach Casting Club, and – a gentleman came up to me and showed me a picture of a 22-pound halibut he just got that was uh, kind of near Cherry Avenue down in Long Beach on a small, uh, like a Thunder Creek fly. It was just basically a bucktail fly, orange and white. So um, the type of rig that I would use, I, you, I would use something that you feel comfortable casting. If, if it's an 8-weight or a 9-weight, that would be perfect for, for a big halibut. And depending on where you're fishing, you have to, you know, your tackle would have to work for that. So if you're going to fish... In the surf, I, I would suggest uh, going near places like jetties. Every, every jetty has got sort of like a big bowl on both sides of it, and depending on the way the current goes back and forth. And halibut like to hang out by rocky structure but in sand. So jetty areas are really good places for big halibut. And what I like to do is I like to do it on a low tide because I can actually I could walk out far enough where I can reach those bowls. 
Ooh, and okay. that's kind of what you want to put flies in. You want to put them in. They're laying in those bowls? They're laying in there, yeah, yeah. Another thing you want to look at if you're going to try to hunt big halibut is check out the grunion runs and then try to figure out, get, get there early in the morning off a grunion run. A lot of times those big fish come pushed in tight to the beach, and then they're going to leave once the sun comes up. But if you get there early and throw some big flies, you got a shot at getting a nice fish. Like a big fly, like a clouser? Like or? a big clouser, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like I, I would use like, uh, you know, chartreuse and white or... Or, or olive and white, or, you know, maybe with a little bit of flash in it. Now, there's another fly, like Norma was talking about, red, chartreuse and white. That's another just killer fly, Le- right? Lefty Cray always said, it ain't no use if it ain't chartreuse. <laughs> so it must work. You know, they do work. They work yeah. everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. Hey, hope that helps you out. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. Mark in Point Loma, you're next up. Good morning, Mark. Hey, good morning, guys. Thanks good morning. Um, I, I have, I'm uh, going to take a trip to... Um, the Indian Ocean, uh, I, I don't know how to pronounce the You're name. Going to the Seychelles? No, Meridus. Oh, yeah, Meridus. Yeah. Meridus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, fishing for a giant. I'm going to May and we're fishing for uh, big bonefish and GT. Oh. Are you going to be on a mothership? Um, I'm sorry? Are you going to be like on a mothership or are you going to be yeah. actually on that island? Well, we're going to go to uh, St. Brandon's Atoll, I believe. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. Yep. Yeah. So, um, uh, um, Start Obviously, working I've got out. To bring my 12 weight, right? Yeah, I would bring you 12 weight and start working out. Yeah, because you're yeah. going to walk a lot. <laughs> you, no, no, you're going to be pulling on some big fish there. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. So, yeah. What else should he bring? Well, you know, I would bring, bring, bring stuff that you're going to be able to cast. You know, all day long. You're not uh, throwing a 12 weight all day long is going to be a tough deal. But I yeah, would definitely. Yeah, that's the killer. I'm not a big guy. Yeah, I would carry the 12 weight or have your guide carry the 12 weight just in case you see something huge. But I would be. Sure. Ca- I would probably be fishing like a, maybe a nine weight most of the day. You know. Yeah, I've got an eight, ten, and twelve. Yeah, that I was th- thinking th- of bringing. Perfect. That's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. And you got it. You got shots at Napoleon Rass. You got big GTs there. You got. You got all sorts of big critters there. South. Is that right? Have you ever fished that? I've never fished it, but some of my buddies have fished the Seychelles, and it's just, it's epic. It's epic. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And, and for those GTs, what do you suggest for a fly? You know, small bait fish patterns. You know, but the, the key with the GTs is you want to have, make sure you have a good hook. So I would put, you know, anything from a 3 to a 4 to a 5 or a 6 eye. You mean hook. something you okay. won't bend out. Yeah, something you're not going to bend out. A short shank, you know, hard, you know, uh, large, right. large gauge hook. Uh, and then I would, you know, make sure you put straight 80 on it for a shock tippet because they can abrade it. Wow. Okay. okay. All right. Well, sounds good. Um, I usually fish Ascension Bay. Well, I am going to fish Ascension Bay in February. Um, yeah, but, of course, those bonefish are a lot smaller. Yeah, the, but, the uh, bonefish in the Yucatan are a lot smaller. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, I appreciate your answer. Hey, have a great trip, Mark. Call us and let us know what that exotic destination's like. It sounds really amazing. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. All right, let's find out what's cooking at the Fisherman's Belly. Our buddy Yanni's on the line. Good morning, Yanni. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. What a great show today. Thank you. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. Great. Awesome. Hey, listen, uh, for those of you who aren't going to be flying all over the world and fishing all over the world and going to be staying home this season, there's probably a great chance that you guys are invited to some holiday parties. So my next recipe is actually a tuna appetizer that you can make at home really easy and take to a holiday party, and it is a Mexican tuna pokey on on fried tortilla chips. Wow. Wow. Uh, actually, you know, uh, pokey is still the rage, and, and people love pokey. And for those of us who have got a lot of extra fish still in our freezers and have got a party to go to, this is an amazing recipe you can make at home, you know, within a half an hour, put everything on tortilla chips and bring a platter to a party. And um, believe me, it's just incredible. It's full of old-world Mexican flavors. There's chipotle. There's soy sauce. And, of course, your tuna. It just turns out great. I really, uh, you know, I brought it to a party already at Thanksgiving, and it was a big hit. That's cool. That's cool, Yanni. Love pokey. So how do we make it? You know, it's it's super simple. I mean, that's the wonderful thing about these pokies. With You know, you take your fresh fish out of your freezer, you thaw it out, chop it up into small cubes, and add a lot of different kinds of flavors. And with this recipe, it's a, a Mexican flavor combination. 
you know, mix it up in a bowl and, and scoop it up, you know, and eat it like that, like they do in Hawaii, or in this particular case, put them on some tortilla chips, and it, it's just that easy. Wonderful. Well, that recipe will be available at Fisherman's Belly right now, right? You bet. It's right there on the homepage, and um, check out our YouTube channel. I've got some new uh, Catch and Cook videos coming up, so... I appreciate you guys a lot, and I want you to continue to have a great holiday season, especially with that frozen fish sitting in your freezer. All right, thanks. Uh, you could go out and catch fresh bluefin right now and make some pokey out of that. How's that? Uh, absolutely. And you know what's great about tuna is there are no parasites in tuna. So you can take fresh tuna. You don't have to freeze it like we have to freeze our yellowtail or our halibut or even our rockfish to protect ourselves against parasites. But tuna you can eat right away. Okay, very good, Yanni. Thanks a lot for that. We'll have that up on our Let's Talk Hookup dot com page on our Angler's Table, and y'all talk to you in a couple weeks. Thanks for the great recipe. You bet. Have a great day, guys. All right, Rick and Temecula, you're next up on Let's Talk Hookup. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Hey, first of all, first of all, I appro- I very much appreciate this uh, topic. Um, when I got into fly fishing, it made me so much better of a conventional fisher fisherman because you really have to learn what the fish eat, how they live, how they they feed. So I appreciate that. But um, my son is has this past summer, I think I've talked to you before, really gotten into fishing. And I wanted to um, um, teach him how to fly fish. So I wanted to ask about bay bass uh, fly fishing on the local bays. And then the second question for you, Pete, on these knives, um, I really want to do something for my son nice for Christmas. And I'd love to have, like, a legacy uh, fillet knife. Do you know how long it takes for the knives to be custom-made? Well, they have a, Okay, well, thanks a lot for that. Actually, Anza Knives has the fillet knives on their website, uh, Anza, A-N-Z-A, knives.com. And uh, you can actually buy one right off the website. But... I'm not sure that they can custom make an etching. I'll bet they could, but if you go to Anza Knives uh, on their web on, the, on their website, A N Z A Knives, and uh, I'll bet if you call them, maybe they could do some custom etching for you. I, I, I'm not positive about that, but uh, check it out. It's, they are they are amazing knives, and they're good good people too. It's a family operation, all handmade, right in El Cajon, right here in San Diego. The, even their sheaths. Are handmade. They're the top grain cowhide made in the USA. Uh, good quality for sure. John in San Diego, you're next up. Good morning, guys. And I also have a question about the knives. Oh. Um, what size do you uh, recommend, Pete? And is there a curve to it, or is it a straight knife? Uh, there's a slight curve to it. They have two sizes. They have a one big one um, on the website. And then the standard one, which is what we're giving away today, has a slight curve to it. Um, I'm, you know, I, it's a good question. I think it's about a nine-inch fillet knife, a pretty standard size fillet knife. Uh, but check out the website, and that's um, probably the best thing to do is to check out what size that is. But it's pretty much a standard size. I'm, I'm going to guess nine or ten-inch fillet knife. Um, and then they, they, so they have the standard one, and then they have the, the new one, which is for big fish. For like big bluefin and big yellowfin and and bigger fish there, so two different sizes there. I uh, hope that answers the question. Thanks a lot for the phone call this morning, Chuck in Long Beach. You're next up. Good morning, Chuck. Uh, good morning, guys. Um, I know you kind of touched on it a little bit already, but I'm up here actually in Long Beach, and I'm looking for if I could have one rig to go fish maybe halibut in the bay, and then walk down to Bolsa Chica, or Huntington, surf perch, and things like that. What would a good rod and reel combo be that's you know not going to break the bank, kind of thing? Yeah, I would look into a, a, a seven or eight weight rod would probably work out good for you down there. And um, again, I would just go to a fly shop and you can look at some of the either the TFOs or the Echoes or some of the ones that are maybe a little bit more uh, cost effective if you're getting started. Or, or uh, you know, you could even talk to some of your, some people that maybe are fly fishermen already, and you can get a hand me down just to kind of learn. And then kind of work your way up from there. But a, a rod that a, I'd say an eight weight rod would probably a gr- be a great all around type of rod for a beginner. Now Chuck's in Long Beach, and there's the Long Beach Casting Club, right? There's the Long Beach great Casting Club. Club, a fantastic club, fantastic casting instructors there. John Vanderhoof, Bob Mito, really really good people down there. Joe Labou, 
uh, I would I would definitely take a look at their club and try to go down there and check out one of their meetings and and find some mentors. You know, that's what I tell young people is really try to meet people that are that have been doing it a long time, that are really good at it, and they'll take you under your wing and they'll make your life so much easier by learning. Your learning curve will shoot up really fast. Yeah, and they, and and what's so cool about fly fishermen is that they're so anxious to teach, like you. You have no agenda here. I mean, you do some casting instruction. Yeah, I have stuff a passion, like that, and I and I just try to try to be in a, a sort of an ambassador by helping young people to try to get into the sport. You're trying to share your trying to share, passion, passing knowledge forward. Really, yeah, that's really cool. And that a lot of fly fishermen are like that, and you don't see a lot of that outside of fly fishing. And that's what's cool about it is that once you get involved in fly fishing, you realize why people are so passionate about it too. A- absolutely and you know when i was when i was a kid I, I did a lot of surf fishing with plugs and stuff and there was no internet and and the guys who knew all the information were really the older guys and and i just tried to be around them and you know i was like a 13 year old kid hanging out with guys that were in their 70s because those were the guys that were catching all the fish and they luckily took me in and and taught me and i feel an obligation to do the same indeed great chuck thanks a lot for the call bruce in huntington beach good morning bruce Morning, guys. Good morning. Hey, Al, Good morning. Uh, when they're rating uh, a sinking line, is that say 350 grains? Is that for the entire 27 foot section of the head? Uh, yeah, I like to use 27 foot long heads. If you, you you can buy an integrated line that's usually 35 uh, feet out of the box, and I'll cut it back to about 27. I I like to kind of use the uh, a rule of three times the length of my rod. So for me, it's a lot easier to negotiate, a lot easier to pick up. And a lot easier to cast. Yeah. Do you? Uh, Rio is a big line manufacturer. They make some great lines and so many different varieties. Absolutely. Right? I use a lot of Rio lines, but they're all good. Scientific Angler, Airflow, they're all great yeah. lines. Yeah. yeah. So that's the cool thing is the modern technology too has come into the fly line more than anything in fly fishing. Yeah, they right? made it a lot easier for people to actually start using shooting heads because you know back when I started, um, I was using a lead core line, which was like really heavy nasty stuff and then we were using amnesia uh running line which was which had a didn't have a lot of memory so you had to really stretch it out and um it, it was it was kind of wire wiry to, to to fish it you know today the the lines are, are made a lot better um they're a lot easier to cast and uh it's, it's a lot easier for you guys to get out there and do it there you go hey thanks a lot for the phone call this morning and when we come back we're going to give away a great Come Fly With Me t-shirt and an Anza Filet knife. You stay tuned. This is Southern California Sport Fishing Voice. It's Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090. This is Rick Jensen with Sport Fishing Financial. I think most of you get that I'm a fisherman and work with the fishing community, but to understand exactly what Sport Fishing Financial does, ask yourself these four questions. First, do you really know how much money you'll need in order to retire comfortably? Next, do you know how much you'll have to save on a regular basis to reach that number? Do you have a process that includes a proven investment strategy and confidence that the money you save will grow? Last, do you have a plan for how to turn your savings into retirement income? If you don't have good answers to these questions, you're not alone, but you should, and I can make sure you do. In addition, if you own a business and currently provide or are planning on providing a retirement savings plan for yourself or your employees, we should really talk. We offer an outstanding variety of creative solutions that are sure to meet your needs. Some of our listeners may feel overwhelmed. Others may believe they are already doing the best they can. In either case, I bet Rick can help. Set a time to meet with him and start planning for your personal or business investment success. Find Rick on the web at sportfishingfinancial.com or give him a call at 949-481-1807. Turner's Outdoorsman, Southern California's number one shooting, hunting, and fishing tackle retailer since 1971 is right in your neighborhood. Now 19 stores and more to come throughout Southern California. No one does it better. Turner's Outdoorsman brings you the best prices and selection, plus a knowledgeable staff that will help make your day on the water or in the field more fun. Stop by your neighborhood Turner's Outdoorsman. To find the location nearest you, check the web at turners.com and sign up for special deals and more. He's not just my fishing buddy. After 30 years, he's a brother, and I'd sure hate to lose him. His bass boat's got nothing to do with it. So I make sure both of us wear a life jacket. Save the ones you love, even if they don't own a fancy boat. A message from California State Parks Division of Boating and Waterways. Great boats, free parking, and a fully stocked tackle shop. Just a few of the reasons Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top charter boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Eclipse, Apollo, Outer Limits, Pacific Star, El Gato Dos, Electric. 
Texas, Pride, Privateer, Tribute, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth Sea Watch in San Diego offer the finest half, three quarter, and full day trips available. Check out the full service tackle store at Seaforth Sport Fishing. And it's all run by fishermen for fishermen. 1717 Quivera Road, just off Mission Bay Drive in Mission Bay. Book online at SeaforthLanding.com. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. Welcome back. Let's talk hookup on the Mighty 1090. Congratulations, Norman in San Diego. You win that incredible Anza Filet knife, courtesy of Anza Knives, and that Come Fly With Me t-shirt by Al Q. And Al, I got to say, I am so impressed with this show. I didn't know what to expect from our audience about saltwater fly fishing. And and, people, and thank you, audience. You responded. And it, I, it was Lots great of great show. questions. It was too. a great show and a lot of great questions and really fun, fun, fun topic to have to talk about saltwater fly fishing with you. So well, thank you for all you do. Hey, thanks for having me, Pete. It's been a pleasure to be here. I, I've always loved coming down here, and, yeah. and this is the best show on uh, best radio show on on, uh, on on fishing. Thank you very much, and and we'll have you do it again for sure. And in the meantime, if somebody wants to get a hold of you and talk fly fishing, learn fly fishing, you do this great program, the Fly Zone. Yeah, yeah, me and my buddy Jim, we do the Fly Zone. It's a great program for people that want to learn and uh, actually get go to the next level, really. So Yeah, so how do we get a hold of you if we want to do that? Uh, just I would say just shoot, shoot, eat, go to my blog and send me, a, you know, information. and Or you can go to the, the um, there's a website, which is uh, theflyzone.com. Theflyzone.com. The, actually, theflyzone.net. Flyzone.net. Yes. Flyzone.net. All right, right, Al. Thanks again for do all that, and thank you for listening today. We'll be back. Next Saturday and Sunday, next Saturday, Dale Hightower from Seagar Fluorocarbon will be in the studio. That's the guy that taught me how to fly fish. Actually, Dale used to be at Bob Marriott. He was at Bob Marriott. He's but he's, he's like, he kind of does it all. He guy. does do it all. Yeah. Dale's a great guy. Yeah. And next Sunday, Captain Greg Gowett from the Aztec, the man that's been on the bluefin here in Southern California. Greg's going to be in the studio next Sunday. Thanks for listening to Let's Talk Hookup. Have a great week, and we'll see you right back here on the Mighty 1090. And again, thanks to Adam for all he does on the other side of the glass.